Act One of The Physician in Spite of Himself by Moliere. Translated by Henri van Laun, 1820 to 1896. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Dramatis Personi Geraint, Father to Lucinda. Read by Todd. Leander, Lucinda's Lover. Read by Arav Agarwal. Scanarelle, Husband to Martine. Read by Jason in Panama. Monsieur Robert, Scanarelle's Neighbor. Read by Roger Moline. Lucas, Husband to Jacqueline. Read by Thomas Peter. Valer, Geront's Servant. Read by Alan Mapstone. Tibu, Peasant. Read by Son of the Exiles. Perrin, His Son, Peasant. Read by Owen Cook. Lucinde, Geront's Daughter. Read by Leanne Yao. Yeah. Martine, Scanarelle's Wife. Read by Devora Allen. Jacqueline, nurse at Geron's and Lucas' wife, read by Sonia. Stage directions, read by Sandra Schmidt. The physician in spite of himself, le médecin malgré lui. Act I. The scene represents a forest. Scene I. Sganarelle, Martin, appearing on the stage, quarrelling. No i tell you that i will do nothing of the kind and that it is for me to speak and to be master and i tell you that i will have you to live as i like and that i am not married to you to put up with your vagaries oh what a nuisance it is to have a wife and aristotle is perfectly right in saying that a woman is worse than a demon look at master clever with his silly aristotle yes master clever find me another faggot binder who can argue upon things as i can who has served a famous physician for six years, and who, when only a boy, had his rudiments at his fingers' ends. Plague on the errant fool. Plague on the slut. Cursed be the hour and the day when I took it into my head to say yes. Cursed be the cuckold of a notary that made me sign my own ruination. Certainly it well becomes you to complain on that score. Ought you not rather to thank heaven every minute of the day that you have me for a wife? And did you deserve to marry a woman like me? It is true you did me too much honor, and I had great occasion to be satisfied with my wedding night. Zounds, do not make me open my mouth too wide. I might say certain things. What? What could you say? Enough. Let us drop the subject. It is enough that we know what we know, and that you were very glad to meet with me. What do you call very glad to meet with you? A fellow who will drive me to the hospital a debauched deceitful wretch who gobbles up every farthing i have got that is a lie for i drink part of it who sells piecemeal every stick of furniture in the house that is living upon one's means who has taken the very bed from under me you will get up all the earlier in short who does not leave me a stick in the whole house there will be less trouble in moving and who from morning to night does nothing but gamble and drink that is done in order not to get in the dumps and what am i to do all the while with my family whatever you like i have got four poor children on my hands put them down who keep asking me every moment for bread whip them when i have had enough to eat and to drink every one in the house ought to be satisfied and do you mean to tell me you sot that things can always go on so wife let us proceed gently if you please that I am to bear forever with your insolence and your debauchery. Do not let us get into a passion, wife. And that I do not know the way to bring you back to your duty. Wife, you know that I am not very patient and that my arm is somewhat heavy. I laugh at your threats. My sweet wife, my pet, your skin is itching as usual. I will let you see that I am not afraid of you. My dearest rib, you have set your heart upon a thrashing. Do you think that I am frightened at your talk? Sweet object of my affections, I shall box your ears for you. Sought that you are. I shall thrash you. Walking wine cask. I shall pummel you. Infamous wretch. 
I shall curry your skin for you. Wretch, villain, deceiver, cur, scoundrel, gallows bird, churl, rogue, scamp, thief. You will have it, will you? Takes a stick and beats her. Ah! Help! 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 That is the real way of quieting you. Scene two. Monsieur Robert, Scanarelle, Martin. Holloa, holloa, holloa. Fee, what is this? What a disgraceful thing. Plague take the scamp to beat his wife so. Martin, her arms akimbo, speaks to Monsieur Robert and makes him draw back. At last she gives him a slap on the face. And I like him to beat me, I do. If that is the case, I consent with all my heart. What are you interfering with? I am wrong. Is it any of your business? You are right. Just look at this jackanapes, who wishes to hinder husbands from beating their wives. I apologize. What have you got to say to it? Nothing. Is it for you to poke your nose into it? No. Mind your own business. I shall not say another word. It pleases me to be beaten. Agreed. It does not hurt you. That is true. And you are an ass to interfere with what does not concern you. Neighbor, I ask your pardon with all my heart. Go on, thrash and beat your wife as much as you like. I shall help you if you wish it. He goes towards Ganarelle, who also speaks to him, makes him draw back, beats him with the stick he has been using, and puts him to flight. I do not wish it. Ah, that is a different thing. I will beat her if I like, and I will not beat her if I do not like. Very good. She is my wife and not yours. Undoubtedly. It is not for you to order me about. Just so. I do not want your help. Exactly so. And it is like your impertinence to meddle with other people's business. Remember that Cicero says that between the tree and the finger you should not put the bark. He drives him away, then comes back to his wife, and says to her, squeezing her hand, Scene 3. Sganarelle, Martin. Come, let us make it up. Shake hands. Yes, after having beaten me thus. Never mind that. Shake hands. I will not. Eh? No. Come, wife. I shall not. Come, I tell you. I will do nothing of the kind. Come, come, come. No, I will be angry. Bah, it is a trifle. Do. Leave me alone. Shake hands, I tell you. You have treated me too ill. Well, I beg your pardon. Put your hand there. I forgive you. Aside. But I shall make you pay for it. You are silly to take notice of it. These are trifles that are necessary now and then to keep up good feeling and five or six strokes of a cudgel between people who love each other only brighten the affections. There now, I am going to the wood, and I promise you that you shall have more than a hundred faggots today. Scene 4. Martin alone. Go, my lad. Whatever look I may put on, I shall not forget to pay you out, and I am dying to hit upon something to punish you for the blows you gave me. I know well enough that a wife has always the means of being revenged upon her husband, but that is too delicate a punishment for my gallows bird. I want a revenge that shall strike home a little more, or it will not be satisfaction for the insult which I have received. Scene 5. Valère, Lucas, Martin. Lucas, to Valère, without seeing Martin. In fact, we have undertaken a curious errand, and I do not know, for my part, what we shall get by it. Valère, to Lucas, without seeing Martin what is the use of grumbling good foster father we are bound to do as our master tells us and besides we have both of us some interest in the health of his daughter our mistress for her marriage which is put off through her illness will no doubt bring us in something horace who is generous is the most likely to succeed among her suitors and although she has shown some inclination for a certain leandra you know well enough that her father would never consent to receive him for his son-in-law 
Martine, musing on one side, thinking herself alone. Can I not find out some way of revenging myself? Lucas, to Valère. But what an idea has he taken into his head, since the doctors are quite at a loss? Valère, to Lucas. You may sometimes find, by dint of seeking, what cannot be found at once. And often, in the most unlikely spots, you may... Martine, thinking herself always alone. Yes, I must pay him out, no matter at what cost. Those cudgel blows lie heavy on my stomach. I cannot digest them. And... She's saying all this musingly, and as she moves, she comes in contact with the two men. Ah, gentlemen, I beg your pardon. I did not notice you and was puzzling my brain about something that perplexes me. Everyone has his troubles in this world, and we also are looking for something that we should be very glad to find. Is it something in which I can assist you? Perhaps. We are endeavouring to meet with some clever man, some special physician, who could give some relief to our master's daughter, seized with an illness which has at once deprived her of the use of her tongue. Several physicians have already exhausted all their knowledge on her behalf, but sometimes one may find people with wonderful secrets and certain peculiar remedies who very often succeed where others have failed. And that is the sort of man we are looking for. Martin, beside. Ah, this is an inspiration from heaven to revenge myself on my rascal. Aloud. You could never have addressed yourselves to anyone more able to find what you want. And we have a man here, the most wonderful fellow in the world for desperate maladies. Ah, for mercy's sake, where can we meet with him? You will find him just now in that little spot yonder, where he is amusing himself in cutting wood. A doctor who cuts wood? Who is amusing himself in gathering some simples, you mean to say? No, he is a strange fellow who takes a delight in this. A fantastic, eccentric, whimsical man, whom you would never take to be what he really is. He goes about dressed in the most extraordinary fashion, pretends sometimes to be very ignorant, keeps his knowledge to himself, and dislikes nothing so much every day as using the marvellous talents which God has given him for the healing art. It is a wonderful thing that all these great men have always some whim, some slight grain of madness mixed with their learning. The madness of this man is greater than can be imagined, for sometimes he has to be beaten before he will own his ability. And I warn you beforehand that you will not succeed, that he will never own that he is a physician, unless you take each a stick and compel him by dint of blows to admit at last what he will conceal at first. It is thus that we act when we have need of him. What a strange delusion. That is true, but after that you shall see that he works wonders. What is his name? His name is Sganarell, but it is very easy to recognize him. He is a man with a large black beard, and who wears a ruff and a yellow and green coat. A yellow and green coat? He is then a paradoctor? But is it really true that he is as clever as you say? As clever. He is a man who works miracles. About six months ago, a woman was given up by all the other physicians. She was considered dead at least six hours, and they were going to bury her, when they dragged by force the man we are speaking of to her bedroom. Having seen her, he poured a small drop of something into her mouth, and at that very instant she rose from her bed, and began immediately to walk in her room as if nothing had happened. Ha! It must have been a drop of liquid gold. Possibly so. Not more than three weeks ago, a young child, twelve years old, fell from the top of the belfry, and smashed his head, arms, and legs on the stones. No sooner took they our man to it, than he rubbed the whole body with a certain ointment, which he knows how to prepare, and the child immediately rose on its legs and ran away to play at chuck-farthing. Ha! Huh. This man must have the universal heal-all. Who doubts it? Oh, it's Bob's. That is the very man we want. Let us go quickly and fetch him. We thank you for the service you have rendered us. But do not fail to remember the warning I have given you. Hey, Zooks, leave it to us. 
if he wants nothing but a thrashing we will gain our point valere to lucas we are very glad to have met with this woman and i conceive the best hopes in the world from it scene six sganarelle valere lucas sganarelle behind the scene la 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 i hear someone singing and cutting wood sganarelle coming on with a bottle in his hand without perceiving valere or lucas la 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 really i have done enough to deserve a drink let us take a little breath he drinks this wood is as salt as the very devil how sweet to hear my pretty flask how sweet to hear your little gull gull no fate with mine could vie if never you ran dry oh darling little flask but constantly we're full come zounds we must take care not to get the blues valere softly to lucas this is the very man lucas softly to valere i think you are right and that we have just hit upon him let us look a little closer sganarelle hugging the bottle ah you little rogue i love you my pretty dear he sings but perceiving lucas and valere who are examining him he lowers his voice no fate with mine could vi is seeing that they examine him more closely whom the deuce do these people want valere to lucas he is surely he lucas to valere there he is exactly as he has been described to us sganarelle aside at this point he puts down his bottle and valere stooping down to bow to him he thinks that it is in order to snatch it away and puts it on the other side as lucas is doing the same thing as valere sganarelle takes it up again and hugs it to his breast with various grimaces which make a great deal of by-play they are consulting each other while looking at me what can be their intentions sir is your name not sganarelle hey what i ask you if your name is not sganarelle sganarelle turning first to valere then to lucas yes and no it depends on what you want with him we want nothing with him but to offer him our utmost civilities in that case my name is sganarelle we are delighted to see you sir we have been recommended to you for what we are in search of and we have come to implore your help of which we are in want if it be anything gentlemen that belongs to my little trade i am quite ready to oblige you you are too kind to us sir but put your hat on sir if you please the sun might hurt you pray sir put it on Sganarelle aside what a deal of ceremony these people use he puts his hat on you must not think it strange sir that we have addressed ourselves to you clever people are always much sought after and we have been informed of your capacity it is true gentlemen that i am the best hand in the world at making faggots oh sir i spare no pains and make them in a fashion that leaves nothing to be desired that is not the question we have come about sir but i charge a hundred and ten sous the hundred let us not speak about that if you please i pledge you my word that i could not sell them for less we know what is what sir if you know what is what you know that i charge that price this is a joke sir but it is no joke at all i cannot bait a farthing let us talk differently please you may find some elsewhere for less there be faggots and faggots but for those which i make let us change the conversation pray sir 
I take my oath that you shall not have them for less, not a fraction. Fine, fine. No, upon my word, you shall have to pay that price. I am speaking frankly, and I am not the man to overcharge. Oh, a gentleman like you, sir, amuse himself with these clumsy pretenses, to lower himself to talk thus. Oh, so learned a man, such a famous physician as you are, to wish to disguise himself in the eyes of the world, and keep buried his great talents? Zganarel, aside. He is mad. Pray, sir, do not dissemble with us. What do you mean? All this beating about the bush is useless. We know what we know. What do you know? What do you want with me? For whom do you take me? For what you are, a great physician. Physician yourself. I am not one, and I have never been one. Valère aside now the fit is on him aloud sir do not deny things any longer and do not if you please make us have recourse to unpleasant extremities have recourse to what to certain things that we should be sorry for zounds have recourse to whatever you like i am not a physician and do not understand what you mean Valère aside well i perceive that we shall have to apply the remedy aloud once more sir i pray you to confess what you are arts bobs do not talk any more nonsense and confess plainly that you are a physician Zganarel, aside i am getting in a rage what is the good of denying what all the world knows why all these funny falsehoods what is the good of it one word is as good as a thousand gentlemen i tell you that i am not a physician you are not a physician no you are not a physician no i tell you since you will have it so we must make up our minds to do it they each take a stick and thresh him hold 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 gentlemen i will be anything you like why sir do you oblige us to use this violence why do you make us take the trouble of giving you a beating i assure you that i regret it with all my heart upon my word i am sorry for it too what the devil does it all mean gentlemen for pity's sake is it a joke or are you both gone out of your minds to wish to make me out a physician what you do not give in yet and you still deny being a physician the devil take me if i am one are you not a physician no plague choke me they begin to thresh him again hold hold well gentlemen yes since you will have it so i am a physician i am a physician an apothecary into the bargain if you like i prefer saying yes to everything to being knocked about so ah that is right sir i am delighted to see you so reasonable it does my heart good to hear you speak in this way i beg your pardon with all my heart i hope you will forgive me for the liberty i have taken Zganarel, aside bless my soul am i perhaps myself mistaken and i have become a physician without being aware of it you shall not regret sir having shown us what you are and you shall certainly be satisfied but tell me gentlemen may you not be yourselves mistaken is it quite certain that i am a physician yes upon my word really and truly undoubtedly the devil take me if i knew it nonsense you are the cleverest physician in the world ha ha a physician who has cured i do not know how many complaints the dickens i have a woman was thought dead for six hours she was ready to be buried when you with a drop of something brought her to again and made her walk at once about the room the deuce i did a child of twelve fell from the top of the belfry by which she had his head 
his legs and his arms smashed, and you, with I do not know what ointment, made him immediately get upon his feet, and off he ran to play chuck farthing. The devil I did. In short, sir, you will be satisfied with us, and you shall earn whatever you like, if you allow us to take you where we intend. I shall earn whatever I like? Yes. In that case, I am a physician. There is no doubt of it. I had forgotten it, but I recollect it now. What is the matter? Where am I to go? We will conduct you. The matter is to see a girl who has lost her speech. Indeed, I have not found it. Valère, softly to Lucas. Ah, he loves a joke. To Sganarelle. Come along, sir. Without a physician's gown? We will get one. Sganarelle, presenting his bottle to Valère. You carry this. I put my juleps in there turning round to lucas and spitting on the ground and you stamp on this by order of the physician odd sniggers <laughs> this is a physician i like i think he will do for he is a comical fellow end of act one act two of the physician in spite of himself by moliere translated by henri van laun eighteen twenty to eighteen ninety six this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org act two the scene represents a room in geronte's house scene one geronte valere lucas jacqueline yes sir i think you will be satisfied we have brought the greatest physician in the world with us oh zooks this one beats everything all the others are not worthy to hold the candle to him he is a man who has performed some marvellous cures who has put dead people on their legs again he is somewhat whimsical as i have told you and at times there are moments when his senses wander and he does not seem what he really is yes yeah. he loves a joke and one would say sometimes that he has got a tie loose somewhere but in reality it is all learning this and very often he says things quite beyond any one's comprehension when he sets about it he talks as finely as if he were reading a book he has already a great reputation hereabouts and everybody comes to consult him i am very anxious to see him send him to me quickly i am going to fetch him scene two geronte jacqueline lucas upon my word sir this one will do just the same as all the rest i think it will be six of the one and half a dozen of the others and the best medicine to give to your daughter would in my opinion be a handsome strapping husband for whom she could have some love lord bless my soul nurse dear you are meddling with many things hold your tongue mother jacqueline it is not for you to poke your nose there i tell you and a dozen more of you that all these physicians do her no good that your daughter wants something else than rhubarb and senna and that her husband is a plaster which cures all girls complaints would any one have her in her present state with that affliction on her and when i intended her to marry has she not opposed my wishes <laughs> no wonder you wish to give her a man whom she does not like why did you not give her to monsieur leandre who takes her fancy she would have been very obedient and i vouch for it that he will take her as she is if you but give her to him leandre is not the man we want he has not got a fortune like the other he has got an uncle who is so rich and whose fortune he will inherit 
all these expectations seem to me but moonshine bragg is a good dog but hold fast is better and we run a great risk in waiting for dead men's shoes death is not always at the beck and call of gentlemen heirs and while the grass grows the cow starves <laughs> that is all well and good but i have always heard that in marriage as in everything else happiness excels riches fathers and mothers have this cursed habit of asking always how much has he got and how much has she got and gaffer peter has married his simonette to that loud thomas because he has got a few more vineyards than young robin for whom the girl had a fancy and now the poor creature is as yellow as a guinea and has not looked like herself ever since that is a good example for you sir after all folks have but their pleasure in this world and i would sooner give my daughter to a husband whom she likes than have all the riches in the country bless me nurse how you chatter hold your tongue let me beg of you you take too much upon yourself and you will spoil your milk lucas slapping Jérôme's shoulder at every word indeed be silent you are too saucy the master does not want your speeches and he knows what he is about all you have got to do is to suckle your baby without arguing so much our master is the girl's father and he is good and clever enough to know what she wants gently gently lucas still slapping Jérôme's shoulder i wish to show her her place and teach her the respect due to you sir very well but it does not need all this gesticulating scene three valere sganarel geronte lucas jacqueline look out sir here is our physician coming geronte to sganarel i am delighted to see you sir at my house and we have very great need of you Sganarel, in a physician's gown with a very pointed cap. Hippocrates says that we should both put our hats on. Hippocrates says that? Yes. In which chapter, if you please? In his chapter on hats. Since Hippocrates says so, we must obey. Doctor, having heard of the marvelous things. To whom are you speaking, pray? to you i am not a physician you are not a physician indeed i am not really really scanarel takes a stick and thrashes geronte oh 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 now you are a physician i have never taken any other degree geronte to valere what a devil of a fellow you have brought me here did i not tell you that he was a funny sort of a physician yes but i shall send him about his business with his fun do not take any notice of it sir it is only his joking the joking does not suit me sir i beg your pardon for the liberty i have taken i am your humble servant sir i am sorry it is nothing for the cudgelling i there is no harm done which i have had the honour to give you do not say any more about it sir I have a daughter who is suffering from a strange complaint. I am delighted, sir, that your daughter has need of my skill, and I wish with all my heart that you stood in the same need of it, you and all your family, in order to show you my wish to serve you. I am obliged to you for these kind feelings. I assure you that I am speaking from my very heart. You really do me too much honor. What is your daughter's name? Lucinde lucinde ah a pretty name to physic lucinde i will just see what she is doing who is that tall woman she is my baby's nurse scene four sganarel jacqueline lucas sganarel aside zounds that is a fine piece of household furniture aloud ah nurse charming nurse 
My physic is the very humble slave of your nurseship, and I should like to be the fortunate little nursling to suck the milk of your good graces. He puts his hand on her bosom. All my nostrums, all my skill, all my cleverness is at your service, and... By your leave, Mr. Doctor, leave my wife alone, I pray you. What? Is she your wife? Yes. Oh, indeed, I did not know that, but I am very glad of it for the love of both. He pretends to embrace Lucas, but embraces the nurse. Lucas, pulling Sganarelle away, and placing himself between him and his wife. Gently, if you please. I assure you that I am delighted that you should be united together. I congratulate her upon having such a husband as you, and I congratulate you upon having a wife so handsome, so discreet, and so well-shaped as she is. He pretends once more to embrace Lucas, who holds out his arms. He slips under them and embraces the nurse. Lucas, pulling him away again. Do not pay so many compliments, I beg of you. Shall I not rejoice with you about such a lovely harmony? With me, as much as you like, but a truce to compliments with my wife. I have both your happiness equally at heart, and if I embrace you to show my delight in you, I embrace her to show my delight in her. Same by play. Lucas, pulling him away for the third time. Odds bodikins, Mr. Doctor, what vagaries! Scene 5 Geronte, Scanarelle, Lucas, Jacqueline. My daughter will be here directly, sir. I am awaiting her, sir, with all my physic. Where is it? Sganarelle, touching his forehead. In there. That is good. But as I feel much interested in your family, I should like to test the milk of your nurse and examine her breasts. He draws close to Jacqueline. Lucas pulling him away and swinging him around. Nothing of the sort, nothing of the sort. I do not wish it. It is the physician's duty to see the breasts of the nurse. Duty or no duty, I will not have it. Have you the audacity to contradict a physician? Out with you. I do not care a straw about a physician. Sganarelle, looking askance at him. I will give you a fever. Jacqueline taking Lucas by the arm and swinging him around also. Get out of the way. Am I not big enough to take my own part if he does anything to me which he ought not to do? I will not have him touch you. I will not. For shame, you rascal, to be jealous of your wife. Here comes my daughter. Scene 6. Lucinde, Geronte, Sganarelle, Valère, Lucas, Jacqueline. Is this the patient? Yes, I have but one daughter, and I would never get over it if she were to die. Do not let her do anything of the kind. She must not die without a prescription of the physician. A chair here. Sganarelle, seated between Geronte and Lucinde. This is not at all an unpleasant patient, and I am of opinion that she would not be at all amiss for a man in very good health. You have made her laugh, sir. So much the better. It is the best sign in the world when a physician makes the patient laugh. To Lucinde? Well, what is the matter? What ails you? What is it you feel? Lucinde replies by motions, by putting her hand to her mouth, her head, and under her chin. Ha! Hi! Ho! Ha! What do you say? Lucinde continues the same motions. Ha! Hi! Ho! Ha, ha, hi, ho. What is that? Ha, hi, ho. Sganarelle, imitating her. Ha, hi, ho, ha, ha. I do not understand you. What sort of language do you call that? That is just where her complaint lies, sir. She has become dumb, without our having been able till now to discover the cause. This accident has obliged us to postpone her marriage. And why so? He, whom she is going to marry, wishes to wait for her recovery to conclude the marriage. And who is this fool that does not want his wife to be dumb? Would to heaven that mine had that complaint. I should take particular care not to have her cured. To the point, sir. 
we beseech you to use all your skill to cure her of this affliction do not make yourself uneasy but tell me does this pain oppress her much yes sir so much the better is the suffering very acute very acute that is right does she go to uh, you know where yes freely that i know nothing about is the matter healthy i do not understand these things Scannerelle, turning to the patient give me your hand to Gérante, the pulse tells me that your daughter is dumb sir that is what is the matter with her ah yes you have found it out at the first touch of course <gasps> see how he has guessed her complaint we great physicians we know matters at once an ignoramus would have been nonplussed and would have told you it is this that or the other but i hit the nail on the head from the very first and i tell you that your daughter is dumb yes but i should like you to tell me whence it arises nothing is easier it arises from a loss of speech very good but the reason of her having lost her speech pray our best authorities will tell you that it is because there is an impediment in the action of her tongue but once more your opinion upon this impediment in the action of her tongue aristotle on this subject says a great many clever things i dare say ah he was a great man no doubt yes a very great man holding out his arm and putting a finger of the other hand in the bend a man who was by this much greater than i but to come back to our argument i am of the opinion that this impediment in the action of her tongue is caused by certain humours which among us learned men we call piquant humours piquant that is to say piquant humours inasmuch as the vapours formed by the exhalations of the influences which rise in the very region of diseases coming as we may say to uh, do you understand latin not in the least scannerelle suddenly rising you do not understand latin no scannerelle assuming various comic attitudes cabritius arci thurum catalamus singulariter nominativo Hymusa the muse bonus bona bonum deus sanctus est ne oratio latinus etiam yes quare why quia substantivo et adjectivum concordat in generi numerum et casus ah oh, why did i not study <laughs> what a clever man yes it is so beautiful that i do not understand a word of it thus these vapours which i speak of passing from the left side where the liver is to the right side where we find the heart it, it so happens that the lungs which in latin we call armian having communication with the brain which in greek we style nasmus by means of the vena cava which in hebrew is termed cubile meet in their course in said vapours which fill the ventricles of the omoplata and because the said vapours now understand well this argument pray and because these said vapours are endowed with a certain malignity listen well to this i beseech you yes are endowed with a certain malignity which is caused uh, pay attention here if you please i do which is caused by the acridity of these humours engendered in the concavity of the diaphragm it happens that these vapours osabandis nequius nequir potarinum piupsa millus that is exactly the reason that your daughter is dumb well this gentleman explains all this why does not my tongue wag as well as his it is undoubtedly impossible to argue better there is but one thing that i cannot exactly make out that is the whereabouts of the liver and the heart it appears to me 
that you place them differently from what they are, that the heart is on the left side, and the liver on the right. Yes, this was so formerly, but we have changed all that, and we nowadays practice the medical art on an entirely new system. I did not know that, and I pray you pardon my ignorance. There is no harm done, and you are not obliged to be so clever as we are. Certainly not. But what think you, sir, ought to be done for this complaint? What do I think ought to be done? Yes. My advice is to put her to bed again and make her, as a remedy, take plenty of bread soaked in wine. Why so, sir? Because there is in bread and wine mixed together a sympathetic virtue which produces speech. Do you not see that they give nothing else to parrots, and that, by eating it, they learn to speak? That is true. Oh, the great man! Quick, plenty of bread and wine! I shall come back tonight to see how the patient is getting on. Scene 7. Geronte, Scanarelle, Jacqueline. Scanarelle to Jacqueline. Stop a little, you. To Geronte. Sir, I must give some medicine to your nurse. To me, sir? I am as well as can be. So much the worse, nurse, so much the worse. This excess of health is dangerous, and it would not be amiss to bleed you a little gently and to administer some little soothing injection. But, my dear sir, that is a method which I cannot understand. Why bleed folks when they are not ill? It does not matter. The method is salutary, and as we drink for the thirst to come, so must we bleed for the disease to come. Jacqueline going. <laughs> ha! I do not care a fig for all this, and I will not have my body made an apothecary's shop. You object to my remedies, but we shall know how to bring you to reason. Scene 8. Geronte, Sganarelle. I wish you good day. Stay a moment, if you please. What are you going to do? Give you your fee, sir. Sganarelle, putting his hands behind him, from under his gown, while Geronte opens his purse. I shall not accept it, sir. Sir? Not at all. One moment. Oh, no consideration. Pray. You are jesting. That is settled. I shall do nothing of the kind. What? I do not practice for money's sake. I am convinced of that. Sganarelle, after having taken the money. Are they good weight? Yes, sir. I am not a mercenary physician. I am well aware of it. I am not actuated by interest. I do not for a moment think so. Sganarelle, alone, looking at the money he has received. Upon my word, this does not promise badly, and provided... Scene 9 Leandre Scanarelle. I have been waiting some time for you, sir, and I have come to beg your assistance. Sganarelle, feeling his pulse. That is a very bad pulse. I am not ill, sir, and it is not for that I am come to you. If you are not ill, why the devil do you not tell me so? No. To tell you the matter in a few words, my name is Leander. I am in love with Lucinde, to whom you have just paid a visit and as all access to her is denied to me through the ill temper of her father, I venture to beseech you to serve me in my love affair, and to assist me in a stratagem that I have invented, so as to say a few words to her, on which my whole life and happiness absolutely depend. Sganarelle in apparent anger. Whom do you take me for? How dare you address yourself to me to assist you in your love affair, and to wish me to lower the dignity of a physician by an affair of that kind? Do not make a noise, sir. Sganarelle, driving him back. I will make a noise. You are an impertinent fellow. Ah, gently, sir. An ill-mannered jackanapes. Pray. I will teach you that I am not the kind of man you take me for, and that it is the greatest insolence. Leandre, taking out a purse. Sir. To wish to employ me. Taking the purse. 
i am not speaking about you for you are a gentleman and i should be delighted to be of any use to you but there are certain impertinent people in this world who take folks for what they are not and i tell you candidly that this puts me in a passion i ask your pardon sir for the liberty i have you are jesting what is the affair in question you must know then sir that this disease which you wish to cure is a feigned complaint the physicians have argued about it as they ought to do and they have not failed to give it as their opinion this one that it rose from the brain that one from the intestines another from the spleen another again from the liver but the fact is that love is its real cause and that lucinda has only invented this illness in order to free herself from a marriage with which she has been harassed but for fear that we may be seen together let us retire and i will tell you as we go along what i wish you to do come along then sir you have inspired me with an inconceivable interest in your love and if all my medical science does not fail me the patient shall either die or be yours end of act two act three of the physician in spite of himself by moliere translated by henri van laun 1820 to 1896 this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org act 3 the scene represents a spot near geron's house scene 1 leandre scanarel i think i am not at all badly got up for an apothecary and as her father has scarcely ever seen me this change of dress and wig is likely enough i think to disguise me there is no doubt of it only i should like to know five or six big medical words to leave in my conversation with and to give me the air of a learned man go along go along it is not at all necessary the dress is sufficient and i know no more about it than you do how is that the devil take me if i understand anything about medicine you are a gentleman and i do not mind confiding in you as you have confided in me what then you are not really no i tell you they have made me a physician in spite of my teeth i have never attempted to be so learned as that and all my studies did not go farther than the lowest class at school i do not know how the idea has come to them but when i saw that in spite of everything they would have it that i was a physician i made up my mind to be so at somebody's expense you would not believe however how this error has spread and how every one is possessed and believes me to be a learned man they come seeking me on all sides and if things go on in this way i am resolved to stick to the profession all my life i find that it is the best trade of all for whether we manage well or ill we are paid just the same bad workmanship never recoils on us and we cut the material we have to work with pretty much as we like a shoemaker in making a pair of shoes cannot spoil a scrap of leather without having to bear the loss but in our business we may spoil a man without its costing us a farthing the blunders are never put down to us and it is always the fault of the fellow who dies the best of this profession is that there is the greatest honesty and discretion among the dead for you never find them complain of the physician who has killed them it is true that the dead are very honourable in that respect Sganarelle, seeing some people advancing towards him there come some people who seem anxious to consult me to leandre go and wait for me near the house of your lady love scene two thibault perrin sganarel sir we have come to look for you my son perrin and myself what is the matter our his poor mother whose name is perrette has been on a bed of sickness for the last six months sganarel holding out his hand as if to receive money what would you have me do to her i would like you to give me some little doctor stuff to cure her we must first see what is the matter with her she is ill with the hypocrisy sir with the hypocrisy 
yes i mean she is swollen everywhere they say that there is a lot of curiosities in her inside and that her liver her belly or her spleen as you would call it instead of making blood makes nothing but water she has every other day the quantigium fever with lassitude and pains in the muscles of her legs we hear in her throat phlegms that are ready to choke her and she is often taken with sinkholes and conversions so that we think she is going off the oaks we have got in our village an apothecary with respect be it said who has given her i do not know how much stuff and it cost me more than a dozen good crowns in cloisters saving your presence in apostumes which she has made her swallow in infections of hyacinth and in cordial potions and all this as people say was nothing but an ointment of fiddle faddle he wanted to give her a certain drug called amatol wine but i was downright afeard that this would send her to the other world altogether because they tell me that those big physicians kill i do not know how many with that new-fangled notion Sganarelle, still holding out his hand and moving it about to show that he wants money let us come to the point friend let us come to the point the point sir is that we have come to beg of you to tell us what we must do i do not understand you at all my mother is ill sir and here are two crowns which we have brought you to give us some stuff ah you i do understand there is a lad who speaks clearly and explains himself as he should you say that your mother is ill with the dropsy that she is swollen all over her body that she has a fever with pains in the legs and that sometimes is taken with syncopes and convulsions that is to say with fainting fits indeed sir that is just it i understand you at once your father does not know what he says and now you ask me for a remedy yes sir a remedy to cure her that is just what i mean take this then it is a piece of cheese which you must make her take a piece of cheese sir yes it is a kind of prepared cheese in which there is gold coral and pearls and a great many other precious things i am very much obliged to you sir and i shall go and make her take it directly go and if she dies do not fail to bury her in the best style you can scene three the scene changes and represents as in the second act a room in Geron's house jacqueline scanarelle lucas at the far end of the stage here is the pretty nurse ah you darling nurse i am delighted at this meeting and the sight of you is like rhubarb cassia and senna to me which purges all melancholy from my mind <laughs> upon my word mr physician it is no good talking to me in that style and i do not understand your latin at all get ill nurse i beg of you get ill for my sake i shall have all the pleasure in the world of curing you i am your humble servant i would much rather not be cured how i grieve for you beautiful nurse in having such a jealous and troublesome husband ah uh, what am i to do sir it is as penance for my sins and where the goat is tied down she must browse what such a clodhopper as that a fellow who is always watching you and will let no one speak to you alas you have seen nothing yet and that is only a small sample of his bad temper is it possible and can a man have so mean a spirit as to ill-use a woman like you ah i know some sweet nurse and who are not very far off who would only be too glad to kiss your little feet why should such a handsome woman have fallen into such hands 
and a mere animal a brute a stupid a fool excuse me nurse for speaking in that way of your husband oh sir i know full well that he deserves all these names undoubtedly nurse he deserves them and he also deserves that you should plant something on his head to punish him for his suspicions it is true enough that if i had not his interest so much at heart he would drive me to do some strange things indeed it would just serve him right if you were to revenge yourself upon him with someone the fellow richly deserves it all i tell you and if i were fortunate enough fair nurse to be chosen by you whilst ganarelle is holding out his arms to embrace jacqueline lucas passes his head under them and comes between the two sganarelle and jacqueline stare at lucas and depart on opposite sides but the doctor does so in a very comic manner scene four geronte lucas i say lucas have not you seen our physician here indeed i have seen him by all the devils and my wife too where can he be i do not know but i wish he were at the devil just go and see what my daughter is doing scene five sganarelle leandre geronte i was just inquiring after you sir i have just been amusing myself in your court with expelling the superfluity of drink how is the patient somewhat worse since your remedy so much the better it shows that it takes effect yes but while it is taking effect i am afraid it will choke her do not make yourself uneasy i have some remedies that will make it all right and i will wait until she is at death's door geronte pointing to leandre who is this man that is with you sganarelle intimates by motions of his hands that it is an apothecary it is what he who oh who i understand your daughter will want him scene six lucinde geronte leandre jacqueline sganarelle here is your daughter sir who wishes to stretch her limbs a little that will do her good go to her mr apothecary and feel her pulse so that i may consult with you presently about her complaint at this point he draws geronte to one end of the stage and putting one arm upon his shoulder he places his hand under his chin with which he makes him turn towards him each time that geronte wants to look at what is passing between his daughter and the apothecary while he holds the following discourse with him sir it is a great and subtle question among physicians to know whether women or men are more easily cured i pray you to listen to this if you please some say no others say yes i say both yes and no inasmuch as the incongruity of the opaque humours which are found in the natural temperament of women cause the brutal part to struggle for the mastery over the sensitive we find that the conflict of their opinion depends on the oblique motion of the circle of the moon and as the sun which darts its beams on the concavity of the earth meets uh... lucinde to leandre no i am not at all likely to change my feelings hark my daughter speaks oh great virtue of the remedy oh excellent physician how deeply am i obliged to you sir for this marvellous cure and what can i do for you after such service sganarelle strutting about the stage fanning himself with his hat this case has given me some trouble yes father i have recovered my speech but i have recovered it to tell you that i will never have any other husband than leander and that it is in vain for you to wish to give me to horace but nothing will shake the resolution i have taken what all your fine arguments will be in vain if all you talking will be of no use i i have made up my mind about the matter but no paternal authority can compel me to marry against my will i have you may try as much as you like it my heart cannot submit to this tyranny 
the and i will sooner go into a convent than marry a man i do not love but no by no means it is of no use you waste your time i shall do nothing of the kind i am fully determined oh what a torrent of words one cannot hold out against it choose Ganarel. i beseech you sir to make her dumb again that is impossible all that i can do in your behalf is to make you deaf if you like i thank you to lucinde do you think no all your reasoning will not have the slightest effect upon me you shall marry horace this very evening i would sooner marry death itself Sganarelle to Gérante. stop for heaven's sake stop let me doctor this matter it is a disease that has got hold of her and i know the remedy to apply to it is it possible indeed sir that you can cure this disease of the mind also yes let me manage it i have remedies for everything and our apothecary will serve us capitally for this cure to leandre a word with you you perceive that the passion she has for this leandre is altogether against the wishes of her father that there is no time to lose that the humours are very acrimonious and that it becomes necessary to find speedily a remedy for this complaint which may get worse by delay as for myself i see but one which is a dose of purgative flight mixed as it should be with two drachms of matrimonium made up into pills she may perhaps make some difficulty about taking this remedy but as you are a clever man in your profession you must induce her to consent to it and make her swallow the thing as best you can go and take a little turn in the garden with her to prepare the humours while i converse here with her father but above all lose not a moment apply the remedy quick apply the specific scene seven Gérante, Sganarelle. what drugs are those you have just mentioned sir it seems to me that i never heard of them before they are drugs which are used only in urgent cases did you ever see such insolence as hers daughters are a little headstrong at times you would not believe how she is infatuated with this leandre the heat of the blood produces those things in young people as for me the moment i discovered the violence of this passion i took care to keep my daughter under lock and key you have acted wisely and i have prevented the slightest communication between them just so they would have committed some folly if they had been permitted to see each other undoubtedly and i think she would have been the girl to run away with him you have argued very prudently i was informed that he tried every means to get speech of her the rascal but he will waste his time ay ay and i will effectually prevent him from seeing her he has no fool to deal with and you know some tricks of which he is ignorant one must get up very early to catch you asleep Scene eight. Lucas, Gérante, Sganarel. Oh, Bob, sir, here is a pretty to do. Your daughter has fled with her Leandre. It was he that played the apothecary, and this is the physician who has performed this nice operation. What? To murder me in this manner? Quick, fetch a magistrate, and take care that he does not get away. Ah, villain! I will have you punished by the law i am afraid mr doctor that you will be hanged do not stir a step i tell you scene nine martin sganarel lucas martin to lucas good gracious what a difficulty i have had to find this place just tell me what has become of the physician i recommended to you here he is just going to be hanged what my husband hanged alas and for what he has helped someone to run away with master's daughter alas my dear husband is it true that you are going to be hanged judge for yourself ah and must you be made an end of in the presence of such a crowd what am i to do if you had only finished cutting our wood i should be somewhat consoled leave me you break my heart no i will remain to encourage you to die and i will not leave you until i have seen you hanged Ah. Scene ten, Gérante, 
Scanarelle, Martin. Geronte to Scanarelle. The magistrate will be here directly, and we shall put you in a place of safety where they will be answerable for you. Scanarelle, on his knees, hat in hand. Alas, will not a few strokes with a cudgel do instead? No, no, the law shall decide. But what do I see? Scene 11. Geronte, Leandre, Lucinde, Scanarelle, Lucas, Martin. Sir, I appear before you as Leander, and I am come to restore Lucinde to your authority. We intended to run away and get married, but this design has given way to a much more honorable proceeding. I will not presume to steal away your daughter, and it is from your hands alone that I will obtain her. I must at the same time acquaint you that I have now just received some letters informing me of the death of my uncle, and that he has left me heir to all his property. Really, sir, your virtue is worthy of my utmost consideration, and I give you my daughter with the greatest pleasure in the world. Sganarel, aside, The physician has had a narrow escape. Since you are not going to be hanged, you may thank me for being a physician, for I have procured you this honor. Yes, it is you who procured me. I do not know how many thwacks with a cudgel. Leandre, to Scanarelle. The result has proved too happy to harbor any resentment. Be it so. To Martin. I forgive you the blows on account of the dignity to which you have elevated me. But prepare yourself henceforth to behave with great respect towards a man of my consequence, and consider that the anger of a physician is more to be dreaded than people imagine. End of Act 3 End of The Physician in Spite of Himself by Moliere Translated by Henri Van Laun